ahead and get started. Sorry, I'm just getting online. So there, I would uh, call the meeting to order. It's the Moortown uh, Select Board. It is Monday, May 6th. Thank you for coming, everyone. We have uh, several people. You may be able to see the lights not very good, but people online as well, including John Hogaboom, one of the board members, and then the other three of us in Don Wexler is off tonight. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open for public comment. Um, who was in here first or who would like to go first? Probably we're here first. But All right, Clark, go ahead. Okay. Sure. Um, and Tom, can you, is Emily um, Hackett in? Um, Emily Hackett is here. Okay. Hi, Emily. Thanks for coming. Um, hey, Clark. All right. So, um, Jay Pilliad and myself are here from the Clean Water Committee to check in with the select board about a uh, rescission letter that Tom received about uh, seven or eight days ago from um, from the state of Vermont um, for the Water Investment Division. And the rescission letter has to do with the money that Northtown was awarded uh, through ARPA funds to do uh, the wastewater project uh, and get as far as we can. Um, and ostensibly what the letter is indicating is that because of certain got, um, uh, uh, certain items that, that were not completed in a, in a timely manner, um, the, the money is going to most likely be uh, rescinded from our, from our ARPA funds. And Emily, uh, forgive me as I'm stumbling along here, I'm going to give you a chance to clear things up in a minute, but um, the, you know, so one of the big issues is that we haven't been able to acquire property in order to do that. Uh, to put a, a system in. Um, and also the 60% report um, has not been fully completed yet. Either. The 6%? 60% report 60%. Yeah, for the preliminary engineering okay. report um, yeah. for, the, for the wastewater project. So, um, and because the, you know, every state, including Vermont, is uh, has to have uh, projects in the ground and completed by September of 2026. And looking at the, the timeline and all of the other things that that would need to be need to happen in order to actually complete a project by that point, it seemed pretty unlikely that uh, more time is going to get to a point where we're going to be able to uh, have a system ready to go. And uh, there's a lot of steps that would be required. Um, once the land was acquired, if we found the right soils, then um, a very significant uh, design project would have to go on uh, underway, as well as permitting for the project. And along with that, you know, there certainly have to be a bond vote and that sort of thing. And we'd also have to acquire uh, the land. And depending on the, the property owner's uh, willingness to take in the phrase value, that sort of thing, it, um, it, it seems uh, the state felt that we were at a point where we weren't going to be able to complete all of the items that were required. The, um, and I think what I'll also do is sort of defend the committee at this point as well. Um, as everyone knows, it's been um, challenging for um, all of us in this room, for the engineers that we hired, for uh, the folks that we've been working with in the state that needed to um, accomplish certain steps in terms, of, especially with, in terms of getting approval from the state uh, archaeologist's office to do the test pits, uh, and many delays that were um, that we had to deal with about a year, um, pretty much. A year. Uh, last winter through um, the time that we did the test this, which is in, uh, in November, um, things were delayed. So there are certain things that we felt happened, that the committee felt happened that were um, out of our control and that some of these delays uh, were not something that we um, were very happy about at the time, uh, but there wasn't much that we could do in terms of um, moving things along. So having said that, um, the there are certain um, requirements within the, this particular letter. Um, the letter requires that the select board respond by May 28 uh, in terms of how it wants to proceed. Um, there is an opportunity for the town to request certain funds um, be kept by the town in order to uh, work on um, uh, perhaps the acquisition of property uh, if we found a, a suitable um, soils. Uh, and we're 
the committee at this point is uh, planning on investigating three different sites. Um, and one site is um, is over uh, just uh, over on 100 uh, at the uh, at the old Maynard farm, which is now owned by David DeFries. Um, actually taking a look at uh, the possibility of the soccer field back here and also the possibility of digging some test bits um, on the Bozak property um, across the river on 100 feet. So those are steps that we're waiting for. There are certain things that uh, has to happen for that. Um, the state archaeologist has to give approval. Uh, and then we obviously have to uh, schedule the test pits and also get permission for the property in order to do that. So there's a, a fairly um, steep hill to climb in terms of um, being able to put a project together and have something feasibly, feasibly done by uh, by the end of September 2026. Uh, we hope that we can get further than we have at this point. Um, and the letter um, that needs to come from the select board uh, would need to um, illustrate in relatively broad um, lang broad language um, how we want to proceed from here. Um, the deadline that's most significant in this, and it's um, uh, in bold in this particular letter, it's on the second paragraph, Callie, and, and who's that? What? Pass that down. Um, the, the deadline for acquiring property is the end of July of this year. Um, there are that particular window is probably somewhat unlikely to happen, but it's something that the committee is still working on, and we hope to at least have um, the test fits done, and if there's uh, suitable soils, to have an approach with the property owners to see where we might be able to go with property acquisition. So uh, the committee plans on coming up with a, uh, a draft of a letter to present to the select board next week um, so that uh, that you, you can review that um, and have it in your hands two weeks from today when we meet. Um, and the deadline to send the letter in is, is May 28th, which is um, you know, just before the Memorial Day weekend. Okay. So, in, so that's where we are at at this point. And I have not necessarily glossed over things, but probably may have just spoken a little bit on some details. And um, Emily, I'd be happy to have you um just you know um just either you know kind of comment on things that i may have missed a little bit or emphasize a point that you feel is important uh thank you um so clark you did a great job um so you know this is kind of how our the wastewater world works um where it's like two steps forward a step back 10 steps forward 10 steps back um, the wastewater committee in Moortown has done an excellent job um, of making the project move forward. Unfortunately, we are up against some really uh, tight de deadlines on our end because the ARPA um, that in the grant is still considered federal dollars. So we have to follow all the um, deadlines and work their way back. Um, so essentially, I think it would be good for the Clean Water Committee and Robert Clark, the engineer, and the select board maybe to get together and um, see if they can put together some kind of timeline. Um, and perhaps giving up the construction funding would help um, and keep retaining some of the money for some of the items on the list that is in the deliverables, milestone and deliverables table could be stretched out now to September of 2026. Um, this is, you know, Wastewater projects can take 10, 15 years. Um, More town is just at the beginning of their uh, of the process. Um, we understand the ARPA deadlines are very tight. Um, unfortunately, because it's being handed down by the federal, um, we, our hands are tied in some ways, and we don't want to see the funding leave Vermont um, when we have other communities who are at a construction phase who may need the money. Um, uh, did I cover everything, Clark? Yeah, I think that's the other part that I did mention, Emily, is that um, a rescission letter or a rescission of uh, some of the of money from our project is not going to necessarily leave the state to go back to the feds. It would most likely be reallocated to another project in the state. Uh, even though it's not a direct um, transfer from one town to another, it's conceivable that some of this would end up in, in uh, Wastefield's lap at this point to help them along with their project. 
So um, um, it's, you know, it, it's a little bit, you know, it's very disappointing to come here and talk about this, but, and it's also, um, you know, something that, you know, we certainly um, have been working more slowly and, and making slower progress than we had hoped. Um, but as Emily had indicated, there will be a product that will come out of this and will certainly be steps of much further down the road than we have gotten in terms of a wastewater project for the village. Um, and, there'll, and there'll be lots of um, information for apps if we get like some property that might be able to be acquired. Um, the property that Waitsfield is going to be using um, is a property that they acquired many, many years ago and intended on putting in the wastewater system. So if we, by chance, we may be able to acquire some property, which would be great. It doesn't necessarily have, it may sit there in the town's possession um, up to a point um, where the funding and um, can be acquired again and to a point where we feel it's reasonable to bring it the course. So that's the, where we're at. And as I said before, it's uh, you know, coming up to you know, and with a draft of the letter that we can present in the select board for the two weeks from today is, is the goal of the committee. And we're happy to take any questions or comments that we have now, or obviously anything that you might want to send to the committee or offer us um, uh, within the next couple of weeks. Would be great. Sure. Well, thank you. And thank you for your comments, Emily and Clark. Uh, thank you. And, and the committee that we certainly don't uh, hold you. Uh, Responsible for not getting the project finished within a couple well, of years. Well, maybe any less than the <laughs> We can't. That's for sure. I suppose you could take me off the border checklist. Probably not. But <laughs> thank you all. But I, but I think um, if we can make some progress. So I think in this next two weeks, as you guys get together, um, like you said, kind of maybe even work back with what you like, which how you are with the. Um, original grant mm -hmm. here in the process. All right, figure out what we can get within this time frame here. Um, I mean, Emily has been great um, and, and she and Robert will be obviously assisting the committee as we move forward. Um, you know, there are, um, there's some details in terms of um, some other funds that we might be able to use to take certain actions. Those are things that, you know, we'll need to clarify and get more specifics from um, before we, before we write the letter. Um, so it's, it, you know, that really to a certain extent, this whole project comes down to finding the adequate soils in order to put a project in. Sure. Uh, and at this point, uh, that hasn't, uh, you, know, it, you know, we're somewhat, uh, a, the, the folks who settled this particular little part of the valley happen to settle it in a place that has lots of clay um, and lots of bedrock. Uh, and it's a narrow little valley with not a lot of access to um, drainable soil. So um, I don't want to speak ill of our ancestors here, but um, if they had decided to stay up on the common, it might be a little easier to. Well, we've continued to follow them, Clark, so don't uh, don't lay it all on them. No, I but uh, thank you very much. And if you can give us a few days prior to the meeting, getting that letter so we can digest it and see if there's anything rather than you know, because that's something I do want to move forward with uh, on that date. Um, yeah, I, might, I might need to give you a call. So we'll yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, okay. very good. Is anyone else, John, online or Callie, Robin, any questions? No, 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 no. Okay. Great. Jay, anything from you or just support no. for Clark? I mean, you know, Jay is, um, being on the committee has been really valuable because of his engineering perspective. And, um, you know, we've all collaborated in trying to put this together for um, for the town and I think we've done a lot of good and and unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to be able to make as much progress as we had hoped. Well some progress is more than what we had and you know, sometimes being able to even get to a point where we say you know what we don't have any more options and we're done yeah. is good too. So uh, ruling out the options has been a big part of this. Yeah. So, areas that we thought might work test bits to come back positive so we rule that out some homeowners that we thought might be open to a warrant so if that's mm -hmm. that so that process takes time and it's useful we yeah. have now have that all documented even we still have some additional sites mm -hmm. that we're, we're investigating but 
It's a process. Absolutely. John, are you all set? You look good. You're on mute, but yes, yes, I'm fine. <laughs> I could read his lips. Thank you. Thank you, Clark. Yeah, you're welcome, John. And Emily, thanks a lot for taking the time to be here tonight. Um, really appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Emily. Oh, you guys are yep. Thank you guys. You're okay, welcome. we'll be in time. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. All, All right. right. Bye. Go ahead, and we still have uh, public comments. So mm -hmm. I know when we start over here, I know I'll get your letter this Are week you if that's what you're. Yeah. Did everyone receive the letters? I think you sent yeah, them yeah. out, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I thought I said. Yes. Yes. I'll receive. Okay. And then. Um... When will that be um, I am not sure. It hasn't been a real priority. It's something that actually Callie was going to be heading up at some point. Um, but it, it's been on the, uh, the other business for some time. Again, right. that... Yeah. I don't know if she did or not, but I think I was trying to get everything no, looking at it. Was it you? All right. Yeah, because we said that. Yeah, we had like, a staff meeting, staff meeting when you were out. Right. Yeah, and we talked about yeah. it at town yeah. meeting. So, so, yeah. so, so I think if we are having a discussion on this, then Bobby should, should be here. To be oh, no, no, no. This is, this is not. We don't want to. Buy the bit and warn properly? Yeah. No, no, no. This is, this, they're just here for public comment. Yeah. And, but we can put it on the, the uh, agenda for. Uh, later this this sometime in the summer and we'll give you all as well, 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 he's a more town resident his wife girlfriend fiance whichever um actually did a lot of the work for opening the roads up in the northeast kingdom which has been quite successful not probably not enough. so i guess if bobby has to be here for discussions and he's going to be told when that's going to be, then we also need to be notified. Well, it would be warned. It would be publicly warned, and you know we can certainly. So it has uh, to be um, an actual item, not just in old business. Right, old business is just so that we keep it on our agenda. Yeah, we can make comments on it, but if we're going to make any um, discussion, we'll certainly bring it up. It'll be in an agenda item, and it will be a yeah. But again, it hasn't been a uh huge so uh, concern on our part and especially the people who've been there for a long time is that this was brought up a long time ago and we were never included in decisions were made and we were never told about them we were never involved in them what decisions were made i don't think we made them. well actually according to ray it wasn't actually any kind of vote but it was in the minutes and basically it opened up our side of town to include these from pretty much all over central Vermont down to Brooklyn. I think we could have anything. Well, no, I think it's it's a misinterpretation, I think. It was like in 08, 09. Um, and I'll tell you, I don't think you were looking at Yeah, that was um, before I was here too. But I think what Ray's take on it was, what I was told at the time was that it was a temporary, a temporary ordinance to be put in place. Ray says it wasn't a temporary ordinance. It was just discussed in the meeting, went into the minutes, and people thought. And that, that was back. Was, that was back in 08 or 09. Like, um, about all the problems that we have, and so we just want to make sure that we are not left out this time. Oh, definitely. Um, we were left out with discussions way back when. Yeah, I think we'll make sure everyone gets due process. So, I said, I'm sure we'll let up, make sure everyone gets due process if there's any kind of decisions made along with public forum or something like we did with the forest committee and something like that. And we need that would be the normal the process, decisions. I believe. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make sure we include everyone. The, the minutes from last fall, did October on when the body happened? Yeah, he made it's a impression. impression. That the town is almost ready to right. create a permitting system that would allow daytime use. It's an option that the town can take. It gives the impression that, that the it's board, the mass right, it was Yeah, that. that was not what. Yeah, we've never something like that. It's, yeah. 
And I, I think if you're listening to me, you can go back and listen yeah. through the meeting uh, um, tape. Anything, in, something like that, it's going to really change the structure of the chat, how we do things. Anything major that's going to change the structure of how we do things in town, we're going to have a public forum discussion on it. Right. Because that's a, that's a Maybe major thing. We're going to office um, one more night, I think, that a lot of companies there, you know, that we can stop. And if you read the minutes, it's there's no one else there who will be speaking on. Thank you. Just came in to the end of the brief presentation on okay. what what options other towns have used. They were like, the saving process. Okay. Made. Okay. Okay. Is it says I can't quote it exactly, but it's basically saying um, the SB um, the SB is is beyond. I can't remember the exact word, but it's basically saying that the SB decided to do this temporary. That's it's it's I don't recall. So. Um, Oh, we didn't, and we we're not. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 No, and I would also you know, I that um, not separate not separate the town into sections. Mm -hmm. Uh we'll have it over here, but not over here. And well, I, that's I, the one for them what we should hear. Yeah. Again, we're discussing it with in other people who might be in favor of it aren't here, so they would feel like you are right, you know, would, would feel so. Um when we put it on as a gen an agenda item to, to discuss. I'll make sure that Sasha sends an email out to you folks uh, that you're aware that it's on that weekly uh, agenda. Is that fair? Sure, but it's on today's agenda. You guys are discussing. It doesn't have to be on the label. It's just a place for it. Is that being on the discussion? We're not. Right. It's on yeah. like, yeah. several meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Well, will that be discussed in this evening on press? They can use on the past three years. No, there is not. There's not on So I guess that's what our community is. I think we've been watching meetings, and then there is some discussion in the events of all this. So at what point can you? Well, so there are no decisions made when when it's when anything is old business pending. There are absolutely no decisions made. Someone comes and makes a comment, or someone has someone to bring up on it. We'll go ahead and listen and bring it up. But there are no decisions being made. Right, but there can be stuff, and that's what you want. Well, if you want to come in every meeting, yeah. please do yeah. get online. Online, I mean, no, we're welcome to have explain it so we know, you know, if there's going to definitely be discussion or possible decisions, it will be in the top part of the agenda. Um, and if it's coming up as old business, no decisions uh, are, are actually going to be taken. And as you stated, the last time there was a meeting and Bobby was on there, it was clearly in the upper part of the agenda. And, yeah, and I, that's I, what we discussed. Yeah. And he just made a brief presentation right. basically about what what other towns have done and, and, and possibilities. So, uh, just making observations that mm -hmm. currently during the road platform section yep. is closed to motorized vehicles. And that sign is not being so um, I currently, I believe the road still posted is um, from what season, right? Like 15? I think so. Uh, and I don't think the sign has come down, but it's a, the Aaron Road Road, class four is posted as no motorized vehicles, and there are vehicles, whether it be regular car and trucks, or ATVs, driving the roads, and it had a thing happen. So I'm just, I'm just letting you know, I don't know if that sign really does anything. I don't know if it's possible they can check it out. I'm not really sure the process is, but just from just from the standpoint of what's happening on the road right now, um, to get to the class four section of the road, you have to drive on the class three section of the road with ATVs or vehicles. Mm -hmm. Um and but it specifically says no motorized vehicles on our section except for the folks that we want to That's not being followed. 
right? And pretty difficult to enforce certain yeah. the town. Uh, what I would suggest uh, that way to help us out is is call the state police when you see unauthorized vehicles or something. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way. <laughs> I mean, we can't. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, but they did it when they had the middle sectors and they wanted to respond. Right. I can do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, just, so it's, I think we we spoke to the corporal yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and he encouraged us, spirit folks were talking here, uh, he, he encouraged us to have people reach out to them. And he said it was very unlikely they would do much or anything about it. Um, but the more record they have of it, eventually they can do something. And then if their incidences, you know, they have a little bit of teeth, I guess. Um, we've, we reached out to the fishing game as well, because they said maybe they would take care of it. And they won't, no one um, really wants to get involved with, with much, to be very honest with you. Um, we, right. right. Um, the fishing game is going to be anything else this season, right? Yeah, you know, but it's stopping vehicles are preventing even on the close roads they could. But yeah. again, it's not really their their thing to do. Our constable is not. Um, he can't really do much more than um, help with the dogs <laughs> type of thing. He's a great guy. In fact, he's a licensed uh, detective with the police force, uh, but. If there's a possible in town, uh, there are no no jurisdiction, really no powers there. That was taken away years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the, sheriff? the sheriff, we have a contract with the sheriff. It's for traffic patrol. Um, and that is really the what they'll do in that contract is traffic control. Mm -hmm. um, they do not respond to different incidences if you we were to call, you were to call in. I know it's frustrating and I know why would we contract with someone that we can't just call and it, but uh it's speed, basically uh radar radar for radar, 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 radar. radar. Yeah. So all sorts no, no, all around town. He's bound for her. Yeah. 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 They, they, were they, they we, we have a uh, report that we get. I saw uh, that. Really the the room for the day. Day. And they're pretty good uh, about getting the right yeah. out. Yeah, I've seen yeah, the very enforcement in Jonesburg. I saw them at the Roots, the little farm store the other day, sitting in the parking lot. That's the middle of the um, um, But again, if they, with the sheriff, I thought they were still on they're going to um, they're going to be down here on 100 feet where they're yeah. getting people, you know, the high school kids leaving school, going 70, 80 miles right. an hour from yeah. the village. They're, and yeah. it's, I mean, I think we all know an area enforcement is going to be unlikely. You know, that's why it's. All that much more important that we. So I mean, we, we do what we can. I mean, every town um, has the same issue, and it's you know, if you had a solution or, or a ton of money, it would probably be we appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. And just to put a piece out there. What was that? I didn't close that. No, I have nothing. No, sorry. Yeah. This setup for doing this. Really, if you look at the bigger picture right now with how enforcement is, ATVs can really do what they want because yeah. nobody is going to stop it. This puts in a plate, what puts this? in a plate. This? If you are looking at allowing ATVs on class three roads, it puts in place rules, regulations, stipulations that can be. I think we're not. I thought we were. Wait, right. Sally, we're not going into this. But I'm just saying, but you're putting a your point now, and we're not allowed to. All right. So, is there any other um, topics that anyone would like to discuss? Steve, do you have anything for public comment? Public comment. Miss, I'm not sure. Yeah. You know. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. Fine. We have this North uh, Moortown sidewalk update. We have uh, Emily Lewis from du du Bois and King. Hi, Emily. Hello. And I think is Kate Campbell here as well. Yes. My colleague, Kate Campbell, and uh, Chris Hunt from VTrans. Hey, Chris, how are you? You know, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Oh, not too bad. How are you doing? You know. <laughs> We're just trying to.
Hey, Emily, you should be able to share now. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we are back here for I guess, the third time to wrap up uh, the, nor the, more the North Moortown uh, Shared Use Pass road Sidewalk road Scoping road. Study. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I can see. We do. We actually have, but we, have budget. Budget. we have a budget for the trades here. Yeah. I'm sorry, Emily, go ahead. We're just having a little problem in here. Okay. I, are folks able to, to see it or? Uh, we just, it's our projection on the screen. I can see it quite, quite well. If anyone wants to come up and take a look at it, uh, go ahead. Okay. Well, I will try to uh, do my best to do descriptions uh, instead of just relying on that. So. Uh, as I said, this is our third time uh, back here. I think we were here in the fall for the local concerns meeting uh, where we heard from a lot of uh, residents, particularly those from Gallagher Acres, about their desire for sidewalk um, from Gallagher Acres uh, across to the intersection with Vermont, Vermont uh, Route 100, uh, so basically to connect that neighborhood along Route 2 uh, to the existing sidewalk that leads into uh, Waterbury, Water, Waterbury Village. Sorry, I'm having trouble speaking tonight. <laughs> uh, um, and then we came back again, I think in the winter to go over um, the alternatives uh, that we had developed. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to go really briefly through uh, some of the existing conditions and the alternatives and then discuss the preferred alternative uh, that we landed on a little bit more in detail. Um, so this is about a third of a mile uh, from Gallagher Acres to uh, Route 100. And uh, we we're primarily, we were only looking at the south side of Route 2, uh, given a lot of the constraints on the north side of the mm -hmm. road. And again, the and particularly because the start and end of the route uh, is on that south side of the road. So mm -hmm. there's some couple of large commercial uh, properties, um, quite a few residential along there. Uh, somewhat recently, the speed limit was changed uh, from, I think, it goes from 50 and it's now goes down to 35 uh, heading west uh, in the, the middle of where Gallagher Acres uh, extends along uh, Route 2. Mm -hmm. uh, so the speed limit does reduce along that area, but a lot of people brought up concerns about uh, the difficulty in navigating uh, that portion of Route 2, particularly if they have mobility challenges or strollers or small children. Uh, there are, so there's existing sidewalk, their bicycle express is right at that intersection. So generates a lot of bicycle traffic. Um, there's def there are definitely concerns regarding the crossing of that intersection. There really is no safe way for pedestrians to cross it. No pedestrian signals. Uh, there are some utilities that, uh, run, uh, along that south side of the road, particularly water lines. So that was something that we took into account as we were looking uh, at the location and design uh, of the project. Um, so other roadside details such as fences and vegetation, uh, swales, some stormwater management that we need to take into consideration as well. A few historic uh, resources, some potentially uh, archeologically sensitive areas um, that may have may have potential for finding uh, pre-contact or historical period archeological deposits. Typically in uh, a, a construction such as a sidewalk, it's not really digging deep enough to uh, necessitate additional investigation, but it could but there could be that potential uh, during the next phase of work. Uh, so I mentioned it was back in back in oh, wow all the way back in June actually that we had that local concerns meeting and followed uh, followed up with moving into our design concepts. So we looked at three concepts, one of which was no build, uh, which is a requirement of the Svetran scoping study process. So if we left uh, this corridor as is, 
Uh, then we looked at a curved sidewalk directly adjacent to the road and then a wider separated path uh, divided off of the road. Um, really, there aren't there weren't too many differences between uh, those two concepts. Uh, there, the one of the main differences was the second concept with uh, the shared use path that being separated. It was potentially a little bit more expensive. Um, it was a little bit closer to the existing uh, water line, um, which means that if there is work needed to be done to that water line, it would necessitate uh, digging up that portions of that path potentially. I'm going to skip down through these alternatives to the feedback. Um, the feedback that we got both during the design alternatives meeting in November, as well as uh, a survey uh, that we sent out, was that people were really strongly in support of any kind of path and basically said, whatever is faster <laughs> and cheaper uh, to construct is what they would prefer. Uh, so over 60% of respondents strongly supported uh, either a curb sidewalk or a separated path. Uh, and less than 10% of respondents did not either did not support at all or did not support very much uh, any kind of path along here. So taking that feedback and discussing with uh, the, the, discussing with the select board at that meeting and then our uh, project team. After that, we determined uh, we would come up with somewhat of a hybrid uh, between these two uh, these two alternatives. We did do an alternatives comparison matrix with which looks at certain things like project goals such as improved pedestrian and cyclist safety, uh, impacts, cost and then community support and that's just one of the the metrics that helps us kind of determine uh what alternative um may be preferred uh and like i said the the two concepts were very very close we ultimately went with somewhat of a hybrid between the two so the preferred design concept uh utilizes a six foot path um, that is set back by about three feet from the road, uh, there would still be a curb. Um, so one edge is still a sidewalk, but it's slightly wider uh, than your typical five foot sidewalk and have a little bit of separation from the roadway. The only spot where that differs is between Mason Drive and Route 100, where we're proposing bumping it back a little bit further due to uh, existing swale along the road uh, so that it wouldn't have to uh, relocate uh, that swale. And then it would intersect with at Route 100 uh, and have a crosswalk and upgraded signal signal uh, to cross the road there and join with the existing sidewalk. There would be uh, a few, still a few uh, design challenges, some trees and vegetation that may need to be removed or impacted uh, and some fences that may, fences and potentially telephone poles that might need to be temporarily removed and reset during construction. What are the water lines, if you don't mind me asking? Water bay. Oh, water bay. What's that? I just didn't know what the water lines you were referencing that went to Gallagher Acres or, or Porter, what those water lines were. Yeah, I think they, they are, uh, I think servicing um, this whole corridor, there are, I believe, three uh, fire hydrants along there as well. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so then uh, the next portion of the report goes into implementation kind of the next steps and then the approximate uh, estimate of construction cost. <clears throat> so the next steps would be uh, finding, well, find a champion, so town staff, or an engaged resident to continue to move this project forward. Um, select board approval, uh, if it's determined that the project should move forward. Coordination, uh, well, in addition to that, um, there would be four 
for matching costs, uh, apply, applying for additional grants uh, for construction. Um, it's anticipated that the matching cost would be about 20% of the total project costs that would be borne by the town of Moortown. Um, VTrans coordination would be needed throughout the next uh, the next steps uh, for transportation management, uh, right of way coordination, stormwater, and then design, construction, and permitting. Uh, landowner engagement would be quite important as well, as there will be um, some uh, impacts uh, to the property owners along the corridor. And then we moved into that fundraising uh, and grant writing. Uh, this is a list of some of those grant resources, uh, including one of the ones that I mentioned. Uh, there's the tra for VTrans Transportation Alternatives Program and the Bike and Pedestrian Program grants, uh, both of which uh, have a lo local match requirement. And then move into the survey, design, and permitting, and then finally construction. And uh, Chris could, would probably be able to talk a little bit more towards the the time frame of of what could be expect how long could be expected uh, for that to occur. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it would be similar to your experience on the east and west side village um, sidewalk projects. Uh, a little less right away here. You know the the current west side sidewalk projects really been bogged down right away, and I wouldn't expect too much of that with this one. We're currently soliciting for bike pad, I believe, until June 10th. So if you did want to pursue this one, that would be the that should be your first choice for a grant opportunity. But uh, TA would also be great for this one. What was the um, the bike? How much was that one? Bike pad goes up to. Oh, yeah, no cap on that. No there cap. used to be a 600. There's no cap, though. But, um, you know, you'll be competing with everybody uh in the state so taking a big swing on that one uh you really have to check a lot of boxes in terms of the application you know look at look at your scoring rubric in the application and see how many boxes you check with this project if you're going to go for a super big project there but um you know what's our estimate at here did we get to that yet emily not quite yet okay. <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> i won't get ahead of myself anymore but yeah, yeah that's, that's where we're at on the v trans front thanks chris so we also include a list of potential permit requirements that are anticipated uh, with this process. And then here's the opinion of probable construction cost. So we anticipate that the construction cost itself would be just shy of 750000 And then once you add in uh, project engineering, municipal project manager, right of way, acquisition, construction, inspection, that takes you up to just over uh, 1 million, which yes, seems very high for this length of sidewalk. Unfortunately, um, uh, costs are just kind of astronomical right now. So that's about um, roughly 200,000 tax um, town contribution. Doing simple math. Um, yeah, that's correct. To maintain it once it's because we would either have to drive over there to plow it or contract with Waterbury. Waterbury, yeah, yeah, one of the things we mentioned in the report regarding maintenance is a possibility would be contracting with uh, with the town of Waterbury for yeah. maintenance of that portion, particularly for winter plowing. Yeah, since it is so so separate from the rest of your sidewalk infrastructure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> And then, and then the report also does include, I'm not going to go through them, but includes the historic resource identification report, the archaeological resource assessment, and then uh, the comments uh, that came from the, uh, the public survey. Chris, that, that TAP grant, when is that due? Uh, we just awarded that, so you'll see applications for that again in the fall. Okay. We solicit that in the MM grant to get, well, we have been for the last couple of years um, soliciting the MM grants, municipal mitigation and transportation alternatives together. So what do we need um, for that? How far do we need to move something forward to, to apply for that grant? 
So you would fill out the form, uh, you know, fill out the application form. You would need probably a letter of recommendation or support from the RPC. Um, and you you use this port this report as the basis for you know as the supplemental documentation to your application. You know, for substantiating costs and everything like that. Right. All right. That's um will give us an opportunity to take a look at it and then um get some input back from the uh the grant and then some voting approval if we want to move forward with it. Yeah, that's um it's it's not related to this, but it's related to the West Side sidewalk. And if the town's gonna apply for supplemental construction funding for that one, um, you know, you'd have to decide if you're gonna go for more money for that project <laughs> under BP this year. You know, if you want to do that and then wait for TA on this one, it's you, you'll have to weigh the options on those projects. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Anything else for us on that, Emily or Chris or Kate? I do not. I've sent this um, to Dawn as well as uh, Sherilyn so, and Sasha. So um, someone will distribute that to everybody else or post it as, as needed. Okay. Any questions, John, on, online? Any questions for you? No, uh, just uh, thank you, Emily and Kate and uh, Chris. My pleasure. Coming. Thanks, John. All right. Thanks. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You as well. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right. Right on time. So we have the uh, town force title search. Mission. Um, oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. I, I did. I'm sorry. Misha. Looked at the time and uh, it's not right on time. I forgot one uh, one agenda. How are you today? Excellent. I'm glad you guys are running a little display because invite me. Uh, from a meeting that I had in the Waitsville town office to here, it took me five minutes more. Oh. I'm glad you were waiting for me. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Nisha Goldman. I'm the director of Medula Path, and I'm here to update you all on the uh, progress with the uh, Vermont 100 multi use path uh, scoping study. I was here last, uh, oh gosh. A long time ago. Yeah, this fall, was fall, 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 fall November. Yeah. And I proposed to all of you the idea of a uh, path running parallel with the uh, state highway, the length of the Medora Valley, and I asked you for uh, support, and you graciously gave your portion of the 20% of the study, $4,000, along with Wakefield and Warren, and we applied for a grant and we got the maximum grant amount. So overall, yeah. with the with the twenty percent match, we now have eighty four thousand dollars to study the project that would study the area from uh, across Vermont Trail where it comes to one hundred B to the village of Warren. Um, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission are the fiscal agent for this project and. Uh, Medward Path will project manage with the support of the <clears throat> Medward Valley Planning District with technical support from them. So we're really well prepared and are waiting for CVRPC to sign the grant and have a kickoff meeting after which we can hire the design firm. And very similar to what language that you're hearing with previous project. I get that a lot. Uh, and the uh, very steep learning for me to realize what does it take working through the municipal assistance program of v -trans. What does it take to get anything off the ground? A lot of patience um, and a lot of time. Uh, and while all of this happening, we did get the construction grant for the Sugarbush Access Road Path. Um, that's something I applied earlier on. And I could share with you because what you just talked about this one one third of a mile of a of, of a, your sidewalk. So the scoping study for the this is I think a good quality to know the scoping study for the 
0.7 mile path in Sugarbush Access Road was done in 2017. And that path at that time was priced at just a little bit under a million dollars in 2017. Now, they didn't get the funding, they didn't get the funding, we got the funding in 2003. And the cost now, we, we up that cost. Wait, wait, what is it? <laughs> so now they're telling us the design firm that we are in the process of negotiating with, because in our budget, we had $90,000 for design firm, or design firm asked for $300,000, not total, but three times. So we're like, no negotiating with them. But they're telling us that it's going to be close to $2 million. So your million dollars for your one third of a mile actually falls kind of right in line with what's going on out there with this federally, with this federal projects. And do it quick, that's what you said, right? For us, two million? Do it quick. Uh, uh, it's not going to go down. And, and, and so much of it is veiled in bureaucracy of, of study upon study. And like, municipal project manager, we have to hire. Like, we couldn't, I couldn't manage the Shunabush project. Hired one. Now, hiring the design firm. Then the design firm will hire the construction firm, and then the construction and construction firm, they all have to be different firms. So they all have to go through this processes. And in the end, your construction cost actually is not the highest cost if you look at all of the things laid out. Yes, very sure. Um, anyway, this is just learning. Uh, but I'm letting you know I'm not discouraged. I'm just I'm cautiously optimistic that we're moving forward. We got the study grant. Let's have a really good study. Um, let's learn uh, what our opportunities and what our challenges are. This is going to be a long haul. Um, and in order for this to be successful, I would like to ask for each town to have someone, ideally from the select board, who really is interested in seeing them through to join the steering committee for this project. Because it is a valley long project town really need to work together to make it happen because we can champion the scoping study but to apply for funding in the in the town of more town more town will have to be the applicant for that wait so mm -hmm. have to be the applicant for their for their, that's how those programs work we can continue doing the work on your behalf and look for grants etc but we need to work side by side you know so that's what I'm here for to update you, ask you, answer your questions, and ask if somebody will be willing to join the committee. Right. Well, first, thanks uh, and congratulations on the uh, the award of the grant. That's that's fantastic. That's a you know a great start. Um, and as far as is anyone here would would anyone here like to be on this uh, scoping study? Oh, well, then I think the most appropriate would probably be Don, right? He's not here. And he loves biking, right? He loves a path. So, yeah, we got one guy. Do it. He wrote an email, I think. Yeah. Did he support it? Yeah. yeah. He's already doing it. I mean, it's a natural. Nice. Yeah, and he's. You know, he's more in the village side too. So it's the most good. And it, he's he's not here, so he can't say no. So yeah. that's probably the biggest. We'll try to steer him in that way. Yeah, but he this seriously, he this is something that Don uh really, really is. passionate about. And he's on the uh safe travels committee, is yeah. that what that committee yeah. is? Uh so um I think he would be a great person. If he doesn't, then we can discuss it, but I think he would be uh yeah. And into that, don't you guys think? Yeah. Unless John, is that anything that you wanted to go ahead and do? John's pretty busy these days. Yeah. Don, uh, I think Don would be would be best. Yeah. All right. So let's get first. Great. Um, I'm wondering if anybody has any questions about this. Yeah. So, uh, so you said that you've. Um, you know, you came in here last fall, and then I thought it was quite an optimistic uh, presentation you put in a proposal. And 
you obviously had a little bit of success here and a lot of learning. What is, what is one of the biggest things you going forward that you'll change or do differently that you have been doing? I know um, I'm right here. Um, that was some of the background. Well, what I what I'm continuing to learn is I think that for something like this to succeed we will be able to find funding. There is funding out there, mm -hmm. at least currently with the current administration, with the way federal funding is, we could find money. The most important thing will be to have valley overwhelming support in the valley for projects like this. <clears throat> because of course, it's easy for businesses that are gonna be connected by the path to see the benefit to that. It's easy to see the benefit to school so children can bike to school. <clears throat> it's for any bikers that bike improve, improving safety. Uh, those are all easy questions to answer. The difficult things would be to explain to a farmer that losing three rows of corn is reasonable and beneficial to the society. And, and the farm stand on the path that's going to be frequented by people who live here and the visitors mm -hmm. could more than compensate for that, but that requires thinking into the future. So if we could think into the future of what could be, this could be done. And I think that's going to be the bulk of work, really the bulk of work. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, thank you. Um, anything else for Yeah. Yeah, I'm living at yeah, home business and it said um joining the measure battle plan initiative. So you mentioned the measure of So I, I don't know if that's something that Morton has not hasn't done yet. Does that impact anything with this? I mean I was looking at the minutes and that's yeah. in there. So it, um I think that the path is amazing. I've worked in waste field, it's all behind the school and everything, mm -hmm. and it's used a lot. So I think it's awesome to have it from one end of the valley to the other. Um and but I, I'm just wondering, I didn't know if that impacts anything if we're not already a member of the United States. Different issues. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Sure. So, we, okay. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and that was my it's a good question. question. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but otherwise, I think it's an amazing um, opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes stewardship. And it takes ownership because the farmers think about three rows of corn, and then people take their dollars and they're cooping on the property, and then the pharmacist no longer in a new session. So, yeah. it's going to take a lot of education for folks to know if this is going to happen. We all we all work together and we have to do the right things. Yeah. I think that's good comments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Thank you. All right. Um, I think they were passing around the. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for coming. Okay, thank, thank you. you. For and we'll let Bob um, know. Yes, we'll let know. Yeah. 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 Uh, we look forward to more updates or if there are critical things. Yeah. Certainly, Don will pass this on, but if you feel you need to, to be here, we're going to start on the uh, awesome. Thank you for having me. Great. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, I think that'll be a nice uh, plan. <clears throat> All right, moving forward. Oh, this is, this is, uh, oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so we had um issue presented was um the lands that are going into the uh in, in the forest management yeah. plan. There's there were questions or were questions on the ownership of them. Um so that was presented to us. We felt like we knew who the owners were, but so we had a title search done, and so I'll just read what, what the summary conclusion is. Uh, based on available records, it appears the entire area of the land that is subject to the conservation easement was conveyed to the town, uh, the town of Moortown, to the town in the Moortown School District by warranty deed Richard and Mildred Benedict, dated 18, uh, 1958, and recorded in Book 28, page 29, or page 92. Uh, because the school district quick claimed its interest in these lands to the town in 2014, uh, the land covered by the conservation easement is owned solely by the town. In 2014, you said? Yep. So it's everything we said. And you can read it closer. It's on, it'll be on file. But basically, the town owns everything except 
to the drip line of the switch. Great. Oh, that's a problem. Uh, really? Yeah. All right. So now we have the ports communications. Sasha, we'll start with you. KFC reappointments. Um, David Stapleton and Joyce Manchester are going to continue with that sort of tenure. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have seven to open liquor licenses for yes. farmhouse flowers. Is that all within the permit? Yes. John, I think I forwarded the letter to you guys about the select board being in the support of the Memorial Library at the town hall. You guys just need to. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Approve it if it's okay with you. And that's for their grants. Yes. Yeah. 17 liquor licenses yep. for one establishment? Yep. Yeah, different weekends or, oh, well, yeah. or or two events per weekend. I get or something. it. I get it. I get yeah. it. It's good. Yeah, it's a venue with a van for the do individuals. I also have North Star Fireworks contract. Okay. That's for more of us. Yep. Yep. And then here's the memo that shows what to about for the art of funds. Touching on that um, forest or um, the land, the town forest, where do you want the funds taken for their for the invoice from Mike Brown? Let me uh, let me get back to our next meeting. I, I have to look into it. The last meeting where you were gone, we talked about where you had been paying him. Okay. All right, yeah. And then I just need approval on the pet insurance that comes out of everybody's paycheck voluntarily. We just need select board approval to continue with it. Um, Joan got two. Quotes on that scanner for the flat maps. Oh, yeah. And there's a company out of Burlington that gave her a good price. Um, she just needs a motion for that as well. Can I, can I yeah, just bring those over when yeah. you get it? Is that how the big ball get? Yeah, it goes those big, big like those, yeah. what are they yeah. called? Yeah. Lam laminates? Yeah. Oh, laminates or, yeah. And then she got, um, Pricing from three banks for the new truck and community bank was the cheapest. There's two scenarios there for if it's the full truck plus trading or if we're keeping the yeah. truck. And then I have a stack of overloads and the resolution for the 250th anniversary. Um, Is this something you were working on? Yeah, I yeah. gave her what I wanted for changes in it. I, I have the letter with the optional part, okay. and I don't know if that's something. So, you what is this? Change. Can you explain it, Robin? Yeah, so this is an invitation by the state to ask every town to pass a resolution appointing someone in the town as a liaison, basically. So the original wording, I believe it said something about, I don't know exactly what it is. Is one of them the original, Sasha, or not? But this is a, that's right. Um, is this an original? Well, yeah, I just took out the wording that said a group of people and put in the, the members of the town, more town select board, ah, historical society, or right. VR liaisons. And then the optional part was that we, uh, was potentially send money or whatever the point would be if it was available for that. Uh, I did want to run this by uh, Denise. Oh, of course. Yeah. It was just for us to approve basically 
Uh, I don't know if I have the email. Well, I don't have the email with me, but with the wording, let's see, let's see. Yeah, so here's the basically the part that was changed. The town of Morfan town officially establishes a liaison or local committee made up of the members of our town's historical society to work with the Vermont 250th Anniversary Commission on any and all activities. Oh, good with that. Callie, all right with that? Yeah. So everybody is okay with that? Can you so. send a copy over to Louise? Yeah. You bet. Okay, great. As long as she's okay with it, then I think we're going to adopt it next meeting and be done with that. Very good. Yeah. Anything else, Sasha? The blinds are three hundred dollars more than I got sold for last fall. Like so. Still cheaper than your competitor, right? You guys still do. That's fine. Yeah. Please. Yeah. 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 And the last thing I have is uh, Brad Reagan asked about fence between Sandy's and the town garage. Do you know anything about that? I hadn't heard anything. I guess it was. Um, well, there's a there's a, a long time ago. There's a chain link fence there. Is he just want it fixed or is it? Yes. Well, I think we'd fix it. Yeah, if we damage it. Or is, I'll talk to Martin, but. Yeah, I mean, if we damage the fence, the the yeah. the loader. I can see us doing that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just have him come down and get us some uh, a quote on it. Though. Probably what you got for stance. Uh, we in old business. No, nope, we are not. We are in the oh communications. Uh, this was my communications. Uh, all right. That well, was it for me. Okay. Um, Fox Road Committee. It's going okay. I feel like we're kind of getting stuck on things that are making it more complicated than it needs to be based on what the building towns are doing. But well, I'm glad you're on that committee and working on it. When you guys get some, uh, something to share with us, uh, Very please good. do. Uh, who's on the committee? We have is Colin Noel, right? Is that Colin's last name? Colin, yeah. He's the one from uh, Sherwin's Road there. Yeah, Brown Road. I think he's from Brown Road. Brown's Road or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Is it Dave from the Planning Commission or who's on the who's yeah, from the Dave, Craig, uh, Carla. Yeah. So there's quite a few people. So there's a lot of. Oh. Yeah. Bob, you're on. So, okay. I think, yeah. I feel like we're getting stuck on a lot of things that maybe we don't necessarily need. Yeah, an example or um classifying roads into groups and group A and group B, which makes it a hundred times more confusing when you could just make a statement that says these roads get summer maintenance and these roads do not. Oh yeah, that is difficult because and I put yeah. We make so, that split which, in the maintenance phase. And so somebody which wants, gets, I mean, way more confusing for people doing the title searches yeah. and all of that. So I think, I think we're getting stuck in that. Um, well, that's one of the things, though, and that's I'm glad you guys are working it out because, yeah. I mean, those are the things that are coming up. Two sections. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm super important and going forward. You know, yes. Right. That's all. I mean, it, we're doing it, things that are going to. I mean, work. Yeah. Work. Or move Moving forward. forward, those are going to be critical to us being able to maintain, you know, those roads to the standard that people expect. I mean, what? Right. Well, but, all right. There needs to be just a clarification yeah, of what, what, it, what it is. What is what? You get. What you get yeah. and what it is. Uh, you get it and what you're not. Like, they don't do anything. Right. A lot of neighboring towns do not do anything. And I think we try or to be flexible things. and you know, so it makes it difficult. Yeah, we right. get some trouble with things yeah. like yeah. FEMA when we don't. What else? We got anything else? Um I 
did hear, so I know um, Sean and Martin have been checking up on the chill where the loggers have worked. So they kind of have been moving around. The loggers were supposed to go up there and fix the Lynch Hill section from this winter. Um, we don't know if they actually did or not. So I'm just going to go check it to make sure because they left it in pretty impassable shape. Do you know what loggers those were? I don't. They're the ones who logged it previously. I mean, they were. We did get an overweight on them. No, we know. All right, going to get it. I just didn't yeah. know the shop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, when it comes down to like working, they were great, but I'm pretty sure from what Martin said, they did the same thing the last time they were up there. They, they're great when they're up there and they're great when they're working, but just they kind of leave it a mess. Kind of <laughs> so I'm to get them to come back and fix it. So I know. Yeah, um, I'm gonna check that, that either, which so. has actually worked out great because <laughs> I have only seen a handful of the normal traffic. I've gone up there because of the good anything four by four guys. Yeah, yeah. Anything. Good. Well, I mean, yeah, well, let us see. And I mean, most of the people that are going up there are camp owners up camp there, anyway, so they are. <laughs> accessing your property which they can just follow up on that just to make sure and i will as well as far as the they're the yes, cleaning it up will, right, and i'll talk with martin as well yeah but, sean was going to check it um this evening just to see if they had or not and then let martin know in the morning so martin could follow right. up with them because usually they're pretty good because they want to come back next year or the year after so they know yeah. if they don't they won't be able to so yep. very good nope, that's mm -hmm. all right john what do you have for us tonight i think uh, I really don't have much. Just glad that the um, the title search is, was done and matched yeah. what I yeah. thought was the case. So. Yeah, I think most people thought that, but it was just good that it was clear and we have a new uh, or, or an up-to-date title search. Um, it's clearly stated, so now there's no uh, no questions there, I don't think. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. That someone will have to. Yeah, that can certainly cost a little bit. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I didn't have much for us. The only thing I mean, letters or communications I had, we did from the sergeants. We had three letters. Um, as you were aware of, they spoke of earlier. Sasha sent them out as far as wanting to be involved in the discussions on uh, ATV use or not on towns. Uh, did we all also get the email from the project on the Yeah, I think everyone put. I think there. Um, I think that was it that I had as far as outside stuff. The only other thing was the the let the um the title search, and I guess we talked about that. So that's that was a, that was it. Um, the other thing we had some permits, some overload permits, and also a um uh work permits, and we had. A work permit that was last year actually it's been two years that we've had this permit it's mike uh Vigiano, and they're over on cobb hill and so he emailed us uh wanted to extend it uh one more year i checked with martin martin was okay with it um so i said i thought it would be fine but i thought this would be the last year that we would do that um apparently because of um the weather last year and a couple other things they weren't able to get in there and do the work but um so uh unless you guys have any issues there's nothing that's changed over there we'll extend that until uh the end of this year and if they next year they'll have to come back and uh ask for a new permit or, or resubmit for a permit rather than to uh extend that one Technically, also pretty sure from what I get out of it, if they are also filing or doing any maintenance on cross forwards, they do need a new regulation. Yeah, they're not, yeah. But if you know, if they're looking to be it, right, becoming aware of it, I don't think they are at this point. Yeah, all right. Um, And that's we have. Is there any old business anyone has? 
and comments? Any new business? All right. Um, I have one thing uh, that I will go into um, executive session with. Uh, well, we can do it towards the end of the meeting. And that's what I wanted to, uh, we need to discuss the um, employees and the pay rates that we were, we talked about and that we budgeted for. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and do that. We can do that, but we really shouldn't look at the decision. Um, that's why we're going into executive session to talk about it. Right, but we just, we can go in and talk about it. We just can't make a decision coming out of it because it becomes a big decision. Mm -hmm. So to have it be right, a big course. decision, it does need to be on the agenda. I understand that, but I want to go in and discuss it because we have a couple of things to talk about it to get some information. Yeah, okay. we can discuss it. Right. Just, we can discuss it. Okay. All right. So I'd move to go into executive session. A second. Oh, do we have to have the reason? Yeah, I'll get it here in a minute. <laughs> it's wherever the evaluation of employees is. Which one is it, John? Thank you, guys. Oh, the, uh, it's number three, the appointment of employee evaluation of public there, office employee, it. provided that the public shall make a final decision to hire or appoint a public officer employee in the meeting and shall explain the reasons for its final decision. I'm not. Yeah, you are not. I, I shut it off. 